Hey guys, today I'm gonna to show you how to create this really fun flipping effect in Apple Motion. I'm gonna be doing it in a vertical format today, but this would work in a normal 16 by nine aspect ratio or a square format or any other dimension that you like to work in. Now, all you need to achieve this effect is some still images. These ones I grabbed off of Pixabay. I will link to them down below. You also need a photo editing app. I'm gonna be using Pixelmator Pro and you just need a great cut of music. If you want to learn a lot more about how to use Motion, check out my course, Motion Launchpad at jenjager.com. I'll link to that down below. And if you want access to my working files, everyone who joins my Patreon community gets access to my actual Motion file as soon as this video drops. All right, guys, let's just dive right into it. I'm going to start, like I said, in Pixelmator Pro. I'm going to drop in all of these images and I'm going to cut them out one by one. I'm not going to get really into the weeds about how to use Pixelmator Pro to do this, but if you do need a little help, I have a quick start tutorial on my other channel. I'll put a card to it here on the top left of the screen. Now, the next step I'm going to do once I've isolated all of these images is I'm actually going to export them one by one as PNG files. Normally, I would export this entire thing as a motion project. That's why people who edit on Final Cut Pro and like to work with Apple Motion use Pixelmator Pro. However, because of the nature of this this project is actually going to be easier for us in the long run if I export each of these as PNGs. So that is what we're doing. All right, now let's open up our motion project. Let's take a look at my settings. Like I said, I'm doing a vertical format. So my resolution is 2160 by 3840. And my duration is just six seconds. This one's a quickie here. I'm going to stay selected on a motion project. Let's open it up. All right, here in our project, let's head on over to library and grab a color solid from the generators category. And under the inspector, I'm just gonna make this a really fun hot pink. And I'm going to rename this group background. And I'm just gonna collapse that. Now let's again, head on over to the library, reach for another color solid and drag it above that background group we just created. Now we've got a new group here. And now at this point, I'm gonna open up my finder and navigate to all of those skateboarder cutouts we made in Pixelmator Pro. Remember, these are all PNGs. And I'm going to drag this first one into this group I just created. Now I'm going to right click and duplicate that image. So I've got two versions here of the skateboarder. This is really important, don't skip this step. And now what we wanna do is grab the color solid, right click to add an image mask. And in the inspector, under the image mask tab, I'm going to drag one of the versions of my skateboarder into this well, and then I'm going to select invert mask. Now let me disable this skateboarder here, and you can see what I've done. I've cut out the shape of this skateboarder out of this blue background. If I disable my background, you can see there's just a hole in the shape of that skateboarder. I'm gonna enable that background again, and now select it on the color solid, I'm going to head on over to properties and I'm going to add a drop shadow. I'm gonna dial up that distance and just really make it look 3D. If you wanted to dial up the opacity, really make it pop, you could. Now I'm going to select the skateboarder copy and I'm going to enable it. So our image is back. And now, and this is super important, I'm going to select my color solid and the version of the skateboarder that made up my image mask. Gonna make sure I select them both by selecting one, holding down the shift key, selecting the other, right click, and I'm going to group those together. So they are in one group and I'm just going to collapse that group. So now we're gonna keyframe some motion here. So again, on that group level that we just created, I'm going to make sure my playhead's queued up to the very beginning of my timeline, head on over to properties and drop down on rotation. I'm gonna make a keyframe on the X rotation and I'm going to make this a value of negative 90. Now I'm going to select my skateboarder image. And again, on the X rotation, I'm gonna make a keyframe and I am going to make this a value of positive 90. Now in my timeline, I'm gonna arrow over six frames and I'm going to change that rotation value back to zero. That's gonna add a keyframe. And again, I'm gonna select my group and I'm going to add a zero there. And let's play that back. So that is the effect we get. If you wanted to offset these keyframes a little bit, you could, let's say, drag the group one down in our timeline, like one frame. So they're not perfectly synced. I kind of like that look. And then the last thing I'm going to do is head up to this group and I'm going to rename it number one. 
and blue. So now let's duplicate that entire group. I'm going to right click and duplicate. I'm going to right away rename this one number two and green. Let's twirl down on that group copy. And first and foremost, I'm gonna change that color solid copy to green. Now let's head back to our finder, find that second skateboarder, and I'm going to drag that skateboarder over my image mask skateboarder until I get that little curved arrow. Do you see that? And again, I'm going to do the same thing in the same group for the skateboarder copy. So now they're all doing the same motion. I'm gonna replicate that process again. Again, select the group, right click to duplicate. Let's rename this one number three. I'm gonna call this one yellow. I'm gonna run my playhead down further in my timeline so I can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna change this color solid to kind of a fun yellow. And again, in my finder, I'm going to replace the skateboarder twice. This is why I exported these guys as PNG, so I could just really quickly, easily drag. And I'm going to do this a bunch more times with different colors. While I'm duplicating all these groups, I know you know what to do. Give me that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell. All right, so I've got all of my groups done here. And now what I wanna do is go down to my timeline. Let me shrink up all these layers so I can see everything cleanly. And I just wanna stagger the timing of each of these groups a little bit. We're gonna play with the timing a little bit more when we drop in our music cut. But I just kinda of wanna get a sense of how everything's flowing together. All right, so that's how everything's looking. And now what I wanna do is sort of reposition and rotate all of these groups. So everybody's maybe scale is different and they're kind of flying around the screen at different angles. So I'm gonna select the first group here, blue. I'm just gonna reposition him a little bit. Now, once I've repositioned him, you can see that my color solid no longer fills the frame. That's okay, let's grab that color solid and I'm just gonna head on over to properties and scale it up. This is not going to affect the scale of our image mask. It's just gonna make sure that that blue color fills the entire frame. Now let's go back to the rest of our groups, resizing, repositioning, and re-rotating one by one. You wanna make sure you're working at the group level here. This is really important because even though we may have to go back and fix the scale of our color solids, we want the properties of our image and our image mask to remain exactly the same at all times. All right, so we've got the basics of our animation down. Now it's time to bring in our music cut. I'm just gonna open up my audio timeline and drag this music cut right in here. And in my timeline settings in the bottom left, I'm going to expand this to large so I can see the waveforms. And I'm actually going to start the song right about here. And I'm gonna drag this to the beginning of my timeline. And then I'm just gonna listen to the song and reposition all of these groups where I want them to come in based on the music. So what I'm doing here is listening to the beats and the lyrics in this song and just aligning my groups wherever there's a change. Now I just wanna add some texture to this. So I'm going to head on over to the library. Again, working in generators, I'm going to select this Truchette Tiles, Truchette Tiles. I'm sure somebody in the comments will tell me how to pronounce it because I really have no idea. And I'm just gonna drag it to the very top of my project. And in the inspector window, I'm actually going to change the shape of this. So the default is these diagonal lines, which are cute, but I'm gonna go with dots. I'm going to change this black to like a lighter gray so it's not so contrasty. And then under properties, I'm going to change the blend mode on this to soft light. So you can see it's adding a lot of texture to everything. Let me go back to the generator. I wanna reduce the size of these tiles and I'm going to head on over to properties again, and I'm going to dial down the opacity so it just looks a little softer. And now I actually wanna make this texture move a little bit. So again, select it on that generator, the tiles here. Let's head on over to behaviors, parameter, and let's go to randomize, and let's head down to object and apply it to the tile size. So now the tiles are gonna be moving a little bit. And I'm just going to dial down the frequency and the noisiness. 
so they're not going so much. And for my final touch, I am going to select all of these groups in my project pane. So I'm just going to collapse them all back up, select them all, right click. I'm going to group these all together. And on this group under the properties tab on the position line, we're going to add another parameter behavior. This time we're going to go randomize again and we're going to increase the amount. So that is our final effect. Great if you have a line of products or really fun brand you are working with. Don't forget to check out Motion Launchpad if you want to know more about Apple Motion. Thanks to everyone who watches to the end. Here's some other videos for you. I'll see you again.